If you were emailed me about the ongoing issues he's having with his Toyota Tundra and an overheating problem he has when he's towing his trailer. Basically he said, those bleepity bleeps at Toyota don't know what the bleep bleep they're doing and this is bleep bleep bull. Now, I reached out to uh, those bleepity bleeps at uh, Toyota and uh, they told me, now hold on here, hold on a minute. We saw the readings and I think we're within range but we think there's something else going on. So I'm gonna tell you what they think's going on in this video. Oh hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. If you're first on the channel, welcome. On this channel, you find truck and SUV news reviews and interesting stuff I do and passionate truck talk with a little bit of a personality. So hit subscribe, stick around, because it's a good time. We always have a good time on this channel. So I'm gonna tell you, like I said in this video, everything's going on. This is part of my ongoing over analysis of the Toyota Tundra and the Toyota Sequoia, not even transmission cooler. Yeah, I'm really covering the heck out of this issue. <laughs> but that's okay because it affects you, the consumer, and frankly, it's a load of bull. But let's go ahead and get to what this uh, guy had said right now. <laughs> So let's go ahead and pull up the email he sent and kind of go over these images. As you can see, he says, hey, I just watched your video on the whys behind the removal of transmission oil cooler on a 2019-2020 Tundras. And he says Toyota USA was wrong. And I'll link to that video above I did. And uh, I talked with Chief Engineer Mike Swears of Toyota and discussed the issue um, overall and got his viewpoint on it. He says he's out of the 2020 Tundra SR5 four-wheel drive with a 5.7 liter and a tow package. He traded up from the same truck, but a 2017, with the cooler. As with the rest of the world, he knew nothing about the removal and neither did anyone with the dealership that I talked to about not having the transmission oil cooler. I mean, it has a tow package, so why remove the one thing that's going to save your transmission? So he's like a lot of consumers, pretty confused. He says he pulls a 29-foot travel trailer. When it's loaded up, it's 9,000 pounds. So he has got a lot of weight behind this Tundra. He also has airbags on the rear axle, so when I'm driving down the road, pulling my trail trailer and the high transmission fluid temp light comes on, I immediately pull over and let it cool down. Never saw that light with my 17 pulling that trailer. Now he goes on to say this happened three times in the 2020 and never with his 2017. So his toe is way confused, feels like he should let it fry so Toyota can see what a horrible decision they've made. Yesterday he bought an OBD, OBD2 module and put the OBD Fusion app on his phone so he can check transmission temperatures. This next picture is what he's taking on the way way to work, 78 degrees outside, in passing gear. Again, this is without a trailer, and he's saying with a trailer, these temperatures go a lot higher. But I think it's a really good idea of where the transmission temperatures are, and if they're within range of what they should be. Now, as you can see, this transmission temperature is already about halfway on the gauge, what he's seeing from his gauge, he bought the OBD2 module for the Fusion app on his cell phone. And so his point is like, man, if it's already kind of getting halfway and I don't have a trailer, what happens when I put a trailer on the back? What happens with all the temperatures going to come up? You know, that's going to certainly rise a lot. And that's why I'm getting high temperature warnings. It's got to be because these temperatures are already too high to begin with. So naturally he's confused and it's pretty easy to see why. He's got the same trucks three years apart and one's got a transmission oil cooler light coming on. The other one doesn't. He's got the same trailer. So something's got to give. And when you find that the, the 19 and 20s don't have a transmission oil cooler, clearly that's the culprit, right? And you can see by these images I put on the screen that these are his transmission temperatures. And you can see where they are, in his view, a little high. He went and bought a sensor so you can see what these temperatures are. Now there's many other videos going around on the internet and on YouTube about these transmission cooler temperatures. And when I talked to Mike Swears about this, he said those within range. And so I talked to another Toyota engineer about this as well. And I showed him the images, and he said, he said, those temperatures you're seeing on the screen are actually normal to Toyota. You're not going to blow up the transmission that way. You don't have to worry about transmission overheating and getting destroyed. Those temperatures are within range, and it's part of the reasons why they got rid of the transmission oil cooler. If you can pull a 9,000-pound trailer of a 29-foot length and still within, be within operating range that doesn't cause harm, then why have the extra part? That's Toyota's analysis of it. But Toyota did say that they think there's another issue going on. And their issue is they think there's a problem with the sensor. They think he needs to go to the dealership 
and have the truck looked at and see if there's a problem with the transmission oil cooler sensor or transmission sensor uh, to indicate when the light turns on. They said through their testing and through their understanding from the powertrain team that that light should not turn on or that warning light should not turn on with those oil temperatures. They said that's well within range and there's no problem with the truck. So there you go. You have two sides to one story. So I still find it kind of curious that uh, these guys decided to get rid of the transmission oil cooler and not drop the price. And the, one of the biggest problems that with this whole issue is it's a lack of clarity and lack of understanding with the consumer. So let me put this sales sticker on the screen and we can see from the sticker that it says there's a tra trailer tow package here. I come over, you can see right below the VIN, you can see the model year and you can see See the color and all that kind of stuff, some big point, but you can see it's 2020, and then I'm gonna zoom over and I'll show you where the trailer tow package is. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put a rectangle on the screen here in just a second. Okay, there's my rectangle on the screen. You can see I kind of highlighted it, but it says tow package, tow receiver hitch, 4.30 axle engine trans fluid coolers, tow haul mode, HD battery and alternator, and integrated 4 7 pin connector. So this is saying there's an engine slash trans fluid coolers. Leads you to believe there's an engine cooler, an engine fluid cooler, and a transmission fluid. I mean, it, it just leads you to believe there's a transmission oil fluid cooler there. And I think that's the main issue people are having is that I don't think the marketing arm of Toyota knew about this change and they just need to, to delete that right there. I think that would clear up some confusion, educate the dealers and delete that piece of text. And I think people would be a lot happier. They wouldn't feel like they're getting uh, duped when they go to buy a 2020 or 2019 model. That hasn't changed the sticker. The dealerships don't understand it like these guys don't get it. And so there's a lack of information and that's causing some concerns. And now you have guys going out to get those sensors and doing their own numbers but there's no really way to look at this from a standpoint of what is the appropriate operating temperature. I don't get that number. I don't, not, I don't know why, but I don't get the number of saying what's in the operating range and where that top number is going to be just because it's probably a warranty issue and things like that. They don't want to give out that number to, and also concern people, right? So you could spend all your time driving on the road, checking the transmission oil temperature and not paying attention to traffic and not kind of know what's going on. But so the numbers you're seeing on the screen are okay. That's what I know. They're okay numbers, and you shouldn't be that concerned with them, according to Toyota. These guys. But hey, back to this guy. So that's the real. That's the story I have. That's the information I have to give to you, the consumer. Do my best to get the information out to your hands. So let me know, know below. Is that temperature too high for you? Are you still freaking out about that? Are you still? I shouldn't say freaking out. Are you still concerned? Let's, let's be honest here. You're buying a $50,000, $60,000 truck. Are you still concerned by those oil temperature numbers? Is it still kind of make you uneasy? What are you guys thinking? Comment below, let me know. Also, send me an email at tim at pickuptrucktalk.com about other issues you're having with the trucks. Guess what? I like to dig in. I like this stuff. I dig it. And so make sure you send this as well. Also, check out this video over here. It's a good time. And like I said, I'll link to the other videos that I've talked about in this video. And also check out the website down below. Lots of good information there. As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.